morning, everybody. Uh, I am extremely happy to be with you to discuss a very important subject. How is the? Okay. Uh, the subject is screening of cardiovascular disease in diabetes. Are we wasting our resources? You see, all of us, Indian physicians, are very much concerned about our resources because our resources are not sufficient in our country. So we never think about any investigation, any uh, treatment plan, we always think about our resources. And say, for example, if you suspect a patient of hypothyroidism, Professor Jaikumar is here, if I do only TSH, I think we can make a diagnosis. And we can save our resources. So similarly, in cardiovascular disease risk assessment, whether we are wasting our resources, I will just discuss about it. This is the way I will go after introduction. The common risk factors like hyperglycemia, hypertension, dys, uh, dyslipidemia, and I'll try to explain the cardiovascular risk assessment in people with diabetes and ultimately conclusion. Cardiovascular disease, as you know very well, it's a macrovascular complication of diabetes. And apart from heart, we get stroke and peripheral vascular disease. Atherosclerotic complications responsible for 80% mortality among patients with diabetes. 75% of cases due to coronary artery disease and results more than 75% all hospitalization for diabetic complication. 50% of patients with type 2 diabetes have pre-existing coronary artery disease. This number may be less now that more younger people are diagnosed with diabetes. One third of patients presenting with myocardial infarction have undiagnosed diabetes. 65% people with diabetes die from some form of heart disease or stroke. Cardiovascular events in diabetic patients, this is what has been shown in Framingham studies, both men and women in diabetes, the risk is more cardiovascular disease. This is the famous Hafner's equation where the non-diabetic cardiovas with cardiovascular disease is equivalent to diabetic without any cardiovascular event. And both type 2 diabetes and diabetes and heart disease, there are some common risk factors like high blood pressure, high triglyceride level, high lipids, and intra-abdominal adiposity, insulin resistance, and so on. So there are some common factors. Probably this is a mixed disease, rather a type 2 diabetes or cardiovascular disease. Pathogenetic, pathogenesis of increased cardiovascular disease in diabetes, metabolic factors are hyperglycemia, lipids, lipoprotein abnormalities, free fatty acid, insulin resistance, hypertension, increased oxidation, glycooxidation, increased endothelial dysfunction, and prothrombotic state. There are many aspects of coagulative coagulation impaired, platelet behavior abnormal, and clot lysis inhibited, fibrinogen level elevated, and disorder kinetics. Plausible biochemical mechanism, hyperglycemia, polyol hexose pathway, increased PKC, diminished nitric oxide, increased cell proliferation, coagulability, and ultimately lead to increased risk for atherogenesis. Insulin resistance is an independent predictor of cardiovascular disease in type 2 diabetes, and Verona diabetic complication study has shown that insulin is also a risk factor. Endothelial dysfunction correlates with insulin resistance, and insulin resistance is linked to a range of cardiovascular risk factors like endothelial dysfunction, dyslipidemia, microalbuminuria, atherosclerosis, and ultimately lead to cardiovascular disease. Now, 
coming to impact of increasing HbA1c, taking the hyperglycemia part, and there is fatal and non-fatal myocardial infarction is more with more HbA1c, fatal and non-fatal stroke is more, amputation and death from peripheral, peripheral vascular disease is more, and even heart failure is more with more HbA1c. And effect of reducing HbA1c is very nicely shown in the Wikipedia study. All of you know it. Coming to blood pressure. Blood pressure reduction is critical. 7% reduction of systolic reduces 3, 7% uh, reduction in risk of ischemic heart disease by just only 3.5% millimeter of mercury systolic and 10% uh, reduction of diastolic. The cardiovascular mortality risk doubles with each 20 by 10 millimeter mercury blood pressure increment. Equipedis again shows the benefits of reduction of blood pressure. Lipids, I don't think I have to explain it. It is very important as far as atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease is concerned, and in fact, diabetes mellitus or diabetes lipidus. The most significant cardiovascular risk factor in type 2 diabetes is dyslipidemia. The characteristic features of diabetic dyslipidemia are high plasma triglyceride concentration, low HDL concentration, and increased concentration of small dense LDL particles. The lipid changes associated with the diabetes mellitus are attributed to increased free fatty acid flux secondary to insulin resistance. Statins reducing cardiovascular events by improving the lipids. This is the 4 study. And reduction in one millimole of LDL leads to 20 to 25 percent reduction in cardiovascular events in coronary artery disease. This is the investigation algorithm for diagnosis and management of cardiovascular disease. One may get the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus up first. That means you have to investigate on the cardiovascular uh, disease line. That means ECG, echocardiography, and exercise tests, uh, which has minimum we, you can advise. And one may get cardiovascular disease earlier. There, one has to investigate on the diabetes line. That means you have to do fasting plasma glucose, HbA1c, and the metabolic part. Reduction in weight and cardiovascular disease risk features factors in individuals with type 2 diabetes. At one year, intensive lifestyle intervention results improved in glycemic control, blood pressure, as well as lipid. All the three are targeted with the lifestyle measures. Cardiovascular risk reduction in type 2 diabetes, these are the things one, uh, we all try in each of our patients, that is blood pressure control, blood sugar control, and lipid control, as well as the weight and the lifestyle, including diet. This is the uh, ESC and ESD joint guidelines. The key messages are diabetics and cardiovascular disease are much more common than imagined. Negative impact of this glycemia is apparent before the onset of diabetes. Prognosis is principally amenable to major progress, yet still unfavorable. Investigational algorithm needs to be employed to detect the alternate side of the disease, starting from diabetes or coronary disease. Oral glucose tolerance test is the best method to diagnose previously unknown diabetes or pre-diabetics. To minimize resources, primary screening for the peripheral, for the potential of diabetes and or cardiovascular disease can be effectively done by non-invasive risk factors to define high risk patients. Prevention of both diabetes and cardiovascular disease is possible. Therapeutic success depends on collaboration across specialty borders. Treatment comprises multi-factors risk intervention and targeted management of cardiovascular disease. The joint ESC and ESD approach provides the state-of-the-art evidence base. It is time to act. It is time to implement the available standards for preventing cardiovascular disease in diabetes. So in conclusion, 
people with type 2 diabetes are at higher risk of cardiovascular disease, hyperglycemia, hypertension, and dyslipidemia are the major common risk factors for type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And we should try our best to find out the risks involving these hyperglycemia, hypertension, and dyslipidemia and try to find out and treat them. And routine cardiovascular risk assessment in people with dysglycemia is essential. Now, before I conclude, this is the recent FDA guidelines. We are thinking about utilizing our resources. Even there are expenditure in other places also. The, the medical corporates, the pharmaceutical house, they spend a lot in different trials to establish a drug. And this is the recent FDA guidelines for the industry, and that is the recommendation is to establish the safety of a new anti-diabetic therapy to treat type 2 diabetes. Sponsors should demonstrate that the therapy will not result in an unacceptable increase in cardiovascular risk. So cardiovascular risk assessment is very, 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 very important. So are we wasting resources? The, my answer is no. Thank you very much for presenting here.